What up there, people? I am back to do, uh, we're continuing on with our Nightmare Review Series. We are on, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 4 Dream Master. So this is the fourth film. This came out, like, a year after 3. In my opinion, this is kind of where it starts. Like, I think this is a, a fine film. There's some decent kills in it. But this is really where I think comedy Freddy, like, they care more about Freddy making one-liners than him being scary. I think this is basically where it starts. So, they do... Br so, the big elephant in the room is some of the Dream Warriors, a lot of them get killed in this movie. Basically, they all get killed. And, uh... Kirst Kristen's character was originally played by Patricia Arquette in the third one. She's replaced here. She's played by uh, Tuesday Night, who did, uh... I think she did the intro for this movie. Which, I mean... She was fine, I guess. She's serviceable for this movie, but I do feel like... And... Unfortunately, she she's replaced by a girl named Alice who's like kind of like the new lead of this movie. In my opinion, I think she's kind of boring. I think, like I said in my last review, they should not have killed Nancy off. I think she should have at least made it to this movie. If they were going to kill her off, it should have been like... In my opinion, it would have been fine if they did it in this movie. Um, I remember watching this the first time. It was 2014 or 15. When it was on television. Because up until that point, I'd only watched the first three. By memory. And then I guess you include Freddy vs. Jason. And then parts of the remake. But yeah. So I like I said, I'm even when I was super into horror, I was more into, like I said, Halloween and Friday the 13th than I was into Freddy. So... Um, so basically the plot of this movie is Kristen, Joey, and Kincaid no longer are residents of, uh, of, uh, Weston Hills. They actually are living normal lives now. Alice is introduced in the beginning of the film, um, played by, uh, I don't remember the chick's name, but Alice is the new girl who's, she's a, who, she's a daydreamer. We meet Sheila. Um, she's kind of like the nerdy girl. Uh, we meet, um, Debbie, um, who's like the tough, fit chick. And, um, Alice's brother and, uh, Kristen's boyfriend, uh, Rick. So, the beginning's kind of, it's kind of slow. Um, then she starts having bad dreams, ends up bringing Kincaid and Joey into her dreams. They confront her the very next day. Then Kincaid wakes him one night, and now he's in locked in a trunk of an old car. I will say this. The dream sequences in this movie are pretty good. If you're hearing, like, splashing, it's raining, kind of. So, if you're hearing, like, little splashing, that's what that is. So, he, wake, he wakes up. Now he's in um, the, the junkyard that Freddy was buried in. This is where... Um, and I guess Kincaid brings his dog, Jason. I bet you that was probably a little Easter egg to Friday the 13th. He names his dog, Jason. Ends up urinating on the ground. This is where it gets fucking weird. Because Freddy basically gets brought back through fire piss. So Freddy's back. Ends up killing Kincaid. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm gonna look at how he killed Kincaid. Oh, he just stat kills him with his claws. So not really that eventful. He also kills uh, Joey. By uh, kind of like a little bit of a callback to like... the If you remember uh, Johnny Depp's death. Where he's in bed and he's sleeping. And then Freddy drags him and basically drowns him. Because Freddy has a water bed. Not Freddy. Joey has a water bed. So, ends up... Yeah, so Freddy kills Joey and Kincaid. This is a big criticism a lot of people have of this movie is they basically kill the Dream Warriors. Um, so. She goes to the Elm Street house. Then uh, basically this is where she reveals to um, Rick and um, Alice about Freddy. Um. 
I'm just gonna skip to when Freddy kills her. So Alice is now dreaming. Um, not Alice. Kristen is dreaming, and she's like on a bed, on a on a. This is where. So she's on a beach, and everything seems fine. Then Freddy, his claws are like going through the water, almost like the shark, kind of like a Jaws callback. You know the shark's dorsal fin, and so Freddy shows up. He's wearing glasses. Um. So Al, so Kristen gets killed by Freddy, and um, she ends up bringing Alice into her dreams. So she basically somehow gives her dream powers away to Alice. Yeah. So, Alice finds Kristen dead. Then, um... So, Sheila's dreaming. Um, ends up falling asleep. And in class, Freddy kills her. This is a pretty good death. Where he, like, sucks the... He kisses her and basically starts sucking the life out of her. The effects are pretty good here. And this is probably the second best kill in the movie. So... While her friends are dying, basically Alice starts picking up her powers from the people who died. Really weird. Um, Alice meets Dan, who basically, I guess, is kind of... I guess who's like her love interest, or who ends up becoming her love interest. This movie is pretty bad, I'm sorry. I was trying to be like, it's okay. I think it has some good dream kills, but the overall story is too all over the place. And I, like, I think Dream Warriors was easy to explain. This one is kind of hard. Like, so what ends up happening is they try to save Debbie. Who, Debbie's death's pretty brutal. Like, because she's, like, working out and then she ends up, because she's scared of bugs, right? So Freddy, like, puts um, the weight on her and her arms end up turning into cockroach arms, like bug arms. And basically her arms like split and like she slowly transforms into a cockroach. Freddy like makes her like basically like a, you know, like a cockroach, you know, roach motel. Which is a thing that uses to kill roaches and Freddy basically squeezes it. And then, um, because Freddy ends up trapping Alice and, uh, Dan in like a loop. Um... She also ends up killing Rick. Rick's death's pretty bad. Rick's death was basically a... It was him trying to do karate. And it's horrible. And he's like fighting basically nothing. So he ends up killing Rick. His death's the weakest. Debbie's is probably the best. I'm sorry. I, that was fucking brutal. So Alice and Dan basically confront Freddy and um and basically she he almost has her dead. Um she basically gets powers of the guardians of the This movie is makes no sense. She gets the powers. Um she ends up beating Freddy and then um And then basically the film ends with her making a wish. And then it I, it basically, you, all these films have a little setup in the end that sets up the sequel. This movie's bad. It's very all over the place story-wise. This is the start of comedic Freddy. Like one of the scenes, he's literally wearing glasses. Like sunglasses when he's about to murder somebody. It's like, come on. Like I said, this is, like, the start of kind of, like, cringe Freddy, in my opinion. Like, I think the kills are good, and I really do dig the dream scene. Especially the scene where they're in a loop, like, in, you know, driving. And it, it, the loop is they're getting in a car and, and getting in a car, but they keep doing it over and over. I like that aspect. I like some of the kills, especially, um, especially, um, Debbie's. It was fucking brutal. And, like, the effects were good. And then she Sheila's is pretty brutal too, like sucking the life out of her. And basically, Alice was watching it, but Alice was a boring character. I don't think there's nothing to her. 
And it, it's like, I feel like if you're going to bring in a new character, Nancy should have been there to almost... You could have had it to be where Nancy was like a teacher or something. And she was like a mentor to Alice. And maybe you could... Because Alice is just boring. I'm sorry. And I think Tuesday night was meh as um, Kirsten. It, they, for some reason, couldn't get Patricia Arquette to come back. I don't know if it's because she saw the script and saw that they were going to kill her off so early. They basically killed the Dream Warrior people, Dream Warriors kids fairly quick. And the way Freddy comes back, like, he comes back through fire piss. Uh, like I said, 3 was, like, the last great one. And we basically get a pretty some pretty bad movies for the next few, especially Freddy's Dead. And it isn't until, basically, Wes Craven's New Nightmare we get a tolerable film. And I, like I said, it's because they care more about making Freddy like a comedian than making him scary. <laughs> and it's weird because Robert England even has said, like, I think either five four or five was like his favorite one to do <coughs> and five is like a lot of people's eyes like next to freddy's dead is considered one of like the worst nightmare movies <coughs> so like and that's one of his favorites because i i think it's because he likes playing a goofier freddy but for me i don't like that <coughs> i like freddy from those first three especially the first two he was scary and if he was making jokes, it was uncomfortable. This, it's like, even in, like, Dream Warriors. Yeah, he had some one-liners in Dream Warriors, but he was still scary. It just feels like in this, he's not scary anymore. How I would have fixed this movie? One, Nancy wouldn't have died in Dream, in Dream Warriors. Or maybe you left it up in the air. If she died and then this and you in this film it's revealed, maybe she survived her injuries. She should have been in this movie. I think you needed a strong protagonist because everyone else was just kind of meh. Like what made Dream Warriors great was the whole cast was good. I feel like in this, none of the characters I like besides like the Dream Warriors people who we already like, everyone else, like the new characters like Sheila. Debbie and Rick were kind of boring. Rick's death was horrible. It was basically him just kicking air for fucking nothing until he got stabbed by Freddy. It just... It just seemed like they wanted to make Freddy a joke. It just... They care more about him being a one-liners. And it just... That took away from the character. Because it just feels like... We, we forget, this dude's a child killer. But we can't... We want to... You care more about making him a joke. So unfortunately, that's kind of what we get the next few films. He's not scary anymore. Definitely by Freddy's Dead, which, oh my god, I'm going to rip apart when we get to that one. Is just, yeah. But I like the special effects. And like I said, there's little things I like. And I like Freddy's makeup effects and stuff. And I don't mind the soundtrack, but I believe none of the characters are really good. I think Alice gets a bit better in 5. She, she's not good in this. In this, she's just, she's just there, and I just her getting random powers. Like she gets her brother's kung fu skills, and it's just weird. It, even for like nightmare standards. So, I find like when I do nightmares, I honestly only do the first three. Freddy versus Jason, and then Wes Craven's New Nightmare. So I only do those. Those are my. That's my. Out of 10, I would give this, like, I guess a 6. Because there's some good stuff in it. And as much as I love... I think Wes Craven directed this one, too. I love Wes Craven, don't get me wrong. But I just... I just feel like this one isn't as good. It just... Like I said, it's not like Halloween. Like... Even in the hall, the bad Halloween sequels, Michael's still scary. The only bad one, really, like I said, is H two O. But 
but for the, even like the bad ones, quote unquote, people consider bad. Michael's still good in them. Same thing with like Jason. I don't feel like they make Jason a goof, but in this, Freddy's a total goof. There's really no moment I find him scary. It, uh. I get some people like jokey Freddy. There are people who really love that, and that, that's fine. But for me, that's kind of what doesn't make him scary anymore. He's scary in like the first three because he has personality, but he's still they still try to make him scary. Now this is just kind of turned into a rant, but whatever. It's just like I said, this film's a six out of ten. There's some good things in it, but my opinion, I think, like I said, the Freddy franchise takes a dip, and the next one gets kind of worse, and then, like I said, Wes Craven is, I mean, not Wes Craven, Freddy's dead, which, that's the sixth one, is horrible. So it's just, they care more about making Freddy doing one-liners, like I've been saying, and just, I get it, people like that Freddy, I think that makes him less scary. When you care more about making him drop one-liners than him being... There's no genuinely creepy moment with Freddy in this film. Even in 3, there was. I, I think uh, Philip's death's pretty scary. Uh, like, I think there, the deaths in the, for those first three, Freddy was scary. In this, he's not. And then this is where it really it starts, and then it gets worse. Progressively. So... The next few videos are not going to be positive for Nightmare Reviews. But, um, also, I'm going to be addressing this really quick. The Snyder Cut. So, Snyder Cut is coming out on Thursday. I will not be dropping a re immediate review. Because I feel like I gotta watch this thing two or three fucking times. So, I may not do a review till like, next week. I understand that's kind of late. I will still do a video Friday, but it will be... I will probably just rank... Um, hold on, I'll just finish this point, though. So the Snyder Cut review won't be till next week, because I gotta figure out, because I don't know if I can just talk this shit in just 30 minutes, because I need to watch this thing a few times. So, yeah, it won't be till next week. But my other videos this week will be tomorrow. We'll be reviewing, slash, pretty much gonna probably be a rant on uh, Nightmare 4, 5, sorry. Then... On Wednesday, I will be... It's kind of like another random review where I will be... Dis since we discussed Godzilla 98 the other day, we're going to discuss Godzilla the series, which was the series based off that 98 movie. Then Thursday, I will kind of... You know, I, I like reviewing horror movies simultaneously. So Thursday, I will start my Child's Play franchise review with uh, the original, starting off with the original. Then Friday, I think I will rank all the Fridays. Friday the 13th. And then, like I said, next Monday or Tuesday, more than likely, will be the Snyder Cut review. And I may not do more. I may do more than one video because it's going to be a lot. But, uh, so I'm going to give this movie, Dream Master, a, a 6 out of 10. If you like Jokey Freddy, you'll probably like it. But for me, it's weak. I don't, I find myself, I don't watch this one that much. I might listen to the Running From This Nightmare song by T Tuesday Night, who sang it. But, yeah. We'll take a hit and I'll play us out. <coughs> Alright guys, I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace!